Right, good night to everybody. Um, those that are online um, streaming live to the WebEx, I want to say happy piece of dedication to you all. Um, we're coming in live in St. Martin, the island of St. Martin. So this is officially GOCC St. Martin um, coming in live and direct to you tonight. All right, so all praises to the most high for that, um, you know, for putting his spirit out there to wake up his people, all right, in these last days. So tonight we're going to have um, uh, a, a different class, right? We're going to be streaming on two different platforms, so it's going to be a little bit, um, you know, we're going to try and make it simple, but... If we have any technical difficulties, this is why, all right? So uh, my name is Bishop Yatazakwa. Sitting beside me is Officer Azar from St. Martin, all right? So we are here to do the will of the Mosai. We are here to follow Christ, uh, Yeshaya. We are here to keep the Lord's statutes and commandments that was given unto the children of Israel all right, from the Most High, Ahaya, Asha Ahaya. All right, so we are here to be servants of Christ, servants of the Most High. We are here to fulfill the law, to fulfill the commandments, to fulfill the prophecy that was given to the children of Israel. All right, brothers and sisters. So. We are going to go into a short lesson tonight because, you know, we are having a feast, so we won't be too long. Um, all right, so we want to go into a lesson to highlight the Feast of Dedication and the significance of the Feast of Dedication in regards to us in this time. All right, so we are coming in live from the Caribbean, all right? This is GOCC West Indies, all right? Um, and we are in San Martin, all right? So please look out for GOCC West Indies. There's gonna be a lot of activity, activities coming from all the islands, you know, which will be a testimony to the world, right? To show that the turn of Israel is waking up. All right, and it cannot be stopped. All right, so I'm sorry for the adversary. You know, you're gonna have a very difficult time dealing with these Hebrews that's on the island. All right, they are very um, zealous. They are determined to come back to the Father and nothing is gonna stop them. All right, so for those that are locked in on the other islands, I want to say blessings to you all, Barakatam. All right, to all the, the elders, the bishop, the deacons, the officers, those that are laboring out there. All right, continue doing the will, continue doing the work, and, you know, continue enduring till the end. All right, so we're going to go into a short lesson. Tonight's lesson is entitled, It's High Time to Do the Work. All right, it's high time to do the work. All right, so for those that are online on the WebEx, can you guys hear us loud and clear? All right, so let's go into the lesson. All right, I'm gonna try to be very um, brief with the scriptures, all right? Let the scriptures do all the talking um, so we can be edified tonight. All right, so let's let's turn our Bibles into the book of, yes, let's, let's do that first, first and foremost. So we're going to open up with a quick prayer, brothers and sisters. All right, see, now this is Shabbat, and we want to give the most high all glory in the faith. So we're going to open up with the Hebrew credo first.
Shamaya Sha'ala Ahaya Alahaina wa Ahaya Akad. Shamaya Sha'ala Ahaya Alahaina wa Ahaya Akad. Shamaya Sha'ala Ahaya Alahaina wa Ahaya Akad. Our Father, who art in heaven, holy is your name. Thy kingdom come, that will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us for our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from all evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. All right. All right, brothers and sisters. So we're about to go into the scriptures. We're going to start off with the book of Deuteronomy, chapter 33. And we're going to start off at verse 11. All praises be unto the Most High, the Most Merciful, the Most Compassionate. Reading from the book of Deuteronomy, chapter 33, and beginning at verse 11. Bless, O Most High, his substance, and accept the work of his hands. Smite through the loins of them that raise against him, and of them that hate him, that they rise not again. Verse 12. And of Benjamin, he said, The beloved of the Most High shall dwell in the safety by him, and the Most High shall cover him all the day long, and he shall dwell between his shoulders. So this scripture is specifically for Benjamin. All right, the scripture says that Benjamin shall dwell between the Most High's shoulders. So that means, brothers and sisters, you who are on the islands, you will be protected by the Mosai. The Mosai have a, a, a certain hedge around Benjamin. This is why, you know, we are waking up today. All right, so there's a, a spirit that is going throughout the Caribbean islands, waking up his people. And the scripture says, bless the Mosai, his substance, and accept the work of his hand. So, brothers and sisters, in, in the islands, we have a responsibility. We have a duty to come back to the Most High and to do His work. All right? We have a, a purpose. Benjamin have a purpose in this region. Our, re, our responsibility is to wake up our people. All right? So, those are on all the islands. You have a duty to go out there and do the work. It's more than waking up to this understanding. You can come, anybody can wake up to this understanding. But what are you going to do with it? All right, what are you going to do with this, this knowledge, this, this information? Knowledge is power, brothers and sisters. All right, this information that we have here is going to give you a certain power that nobody could control. And the enemy understand that this information is detrimental to his system, to his construct. So this is why they've been trying their best to hide it from us. But it can't be hidden anymore. So we live in a time where all the information that was hidden to us has to be revealed. And now, especially in the Caribbean, the information is pouring out. You understand? The information is poor. Now, yes, we may not have the resources compared to other regions like North, North America, Europe, or so on, but we still get the information. You understand? Before, you know, the Apocrypha was hidden from us. You understand? Now, the Apocrypha is like an, 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 ordinary, an ordinary book. So now we have the information now. Now we have the, the complete 1611. You understand? Which will show us who we are as a people. All right? Having all the other books like the book of Joshua, the book of Enoch, all those information is important to our identity. So those information, brothers and sisters, cannot be hidden anymore. So now Benjamin is getting that information. And when Benjamin gets organized, brothers and sisters, they become a threat. You understand? So we know that we have that wolf instinct. And brothers and sisters, they've been teaming that for a very long time. But it cannot be controlled anymore. 
it cannot be controlled because the most high spirit is upon us now so now we understand that benjamin have a responsibility all right so let's go into the the book of proverbs chapter 16 and let's begin at verse 3. so knowing that we are benjamin we know we must we must have the understanding of what we are all right it's more than just knowing that you are benjamin it's more and more than just knowing that you are israelite what are you going to do with this information all right so let's go to the book of proverbs chapter 16 verse 3. this is the book of proverbs chapter 16 beginning at verse 3. commit thy works unto the most high and thy thoughts shall be established. You see, it says, commit thy works unto the Most High, and thy thoughts shall be established. So you must be committed to this work. You must be committed to the Most High. This is not no fly by night thing. You understand? You have to be totally devoted and give your life back to the Most High. You understand? This is what the Most High want us to do. Totally give back our life to him. All right? Read that verse again. Verse 3. Commit thy works unto the Most High, and thy thoughts shall be established. And thy thoughts shall be established. So we can, we can move forward, brothers and sisters, unless we become established, unless we become rooted. All right? Because sometimes you come into this understanding, and you're still shaky. You don't know, you know, if you're going or you're coming. You don't know what to really believe in. But So you must have the basic understanding of the scriptures. And the basic understanding of the scriptures is keeping the commandment. That's the basic. If you don't know anything else, brothers and sisters, know the commandments. Know the fruits of the spirit. Because sometimes, you know, people want to get all this knowledge about the luminaries and all these things, but they can't, they can't recite the Ten Commandments. So learn the Ten Commandments, learn the, 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 the foundation of Christ, so we will be established. Read it again. Proverbs chapter 16, verse 3. Commit thy works unto the Most High, mm -hmm. and thy thoughts shall be established. And our, and our thoughts shall be established. Let's go to the book of Galatians chapter 6, verse 4. So, brothers and sisters, it's all about doing the work right now. As the title of the lesson is high time to do the work. Right now, in the Caribbean, it, it ripe. It ripe. It's so much fruits there. It's just a pick. There's so much people, you know, becoming more aware. All you have to do is just ask questions. You understand? And sometimes, you know, people people know that Christianity is false. People know that, you know, the religions on the earth was designed to keep us, you know, to keep us divided. They have this understanding. So all we have to do is ask questions. Ask somebody, yo, where, 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 where do you think the people from this island came from? You understand? Like, you know, you have some people in, on the islands don't even know about slavery. You have some people don't even know about the slave trade. Because you know why? We've been brainwashed by the Europeans. They taught us that Christopher Columbus discovered us. Which we all know that's a lie. You, if, if you don't know that in the 21st century, something wrong with you. If you don't know Columbus was a liar, something wrong with you. You understand? So let's read the book of Galatians, chapter 6, verse 4. This is the book of Galatians, chapter 6, verse 4. But let every man prove his own work, and then shall he have rejoicing in himself alone, and not in an order. You see that? So let every man prove his own work. So we all have to examine ourselves. Right? We must know, okay, what, you know, what is our purpose? What is our responsibility? What is our duty? Because Christ told us in the book of Matthew chapter 28 that 
you know, we must go out and teach all nations, you know, teaching them to observe all things. So this is one of the things that Christ commanded us to do as disciples. You understand? So, you know, the scripture says, but let every man prove his own work. So, brothers and sisters, each one of us have a job to do for the most high. You understand? Each one of us have to do a job to the most high. We didn't come into this understanding, you know, to, 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 to put it on that table. As the scripture says, you can't put, you can't hide the candle under the table, under a bushel. So we have this light, we must shine it right so everybody can see. Right? So we must share this information, we must teach this information. Right? The, the, the scripture says the, the, the gospel must be preached throughout the four corners. So right in our areas, right in our four corners, our surroundings, we should be talking to people about this truth. And listen, if people don't want to follow you, so be it. We don't have, we're not supposed to force anybody to, to, to this understanding because Christ never forced anybody. All right? So in order to come to the Father or that we must be committed unto, 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 unto him. Let's go into the book of Acts. So forgive me, brothers and sisters, if, you know, I've been traveling, you know, I didn't get any sleep whatsoever since, you know, since yesterday, I didn't get any sleep at all. So, you know, please forgive me if, you know, if I might fall asleep or something, right? Yes. All right, so let's go into the book of Acts chapter 5, and let's begin at verse 38. And this is the book of Acts chapter 5, beginning at verse 38. And now I say unto you, refrain from these men and let them alone. For if this counsel of this work be of men, it will come to naught. You see that? So, brothers and sisters, again, you don't, you don't have to force anybody to this truth. If, if it's the will of the most high that this person wake up, it will happen. Because listen, the most high never forced nobody to come here. You understand? He never forced, he never say, well, listen, you know, if you don't come here, you're going to die tonight. So we all had a, a, a choice to come here tonight. You understand? Because we know the benefits of fellowship. We know the benefits of coming together. So that's the scripture saying, but let every man, not, not, not Galatians, chapter, um, Acts chapter 5 says, and now I say unto you, refrain from these men and let them alone. If this counsel or this work be of men, it will come to naught. So we know that this work that we're doing is not of men. Because if this is of men, it will come to naught, brothers and sisters. But this is of the Father, and it must come to pass. It must come to pass. Listen. You know, and, and I've seen where congregations start off with two, three people. It, it, and it, it grew, it expanded so fast that, you know, people, you know, people start coming in from all sides of the, the, you know, of all walks of life. And this is the same thing that's going to happen here in, in St. Martin. You're going you're gonna to see after the baptism, you're going to get an a, 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 a influx of people. I mean, look at Sister Paula, right? This sister wasn't even part of the body. And look how she with us tonight. You understand? Just by, just by the event that's about to take place. So just imagine how, how the Most High work in behind the scene to, to bring people to his flock. You understand? So we had to make sure, brothers and sisters, that we do our part to this work. Right? Let's go into the book of Isaiah. So this this work, brothers and sisters, if the most high is not at the center of it, it will come to naught. Look how much Israelite groups out there. And it's still the same two people. 
You understand? It's like, you know, I remember when we started in Trinidad, it was like three, four people. Before you know it, the whole street pack up with people because you, you're seeing your fruits. So, you know, you must have fruits for this world brother and sister. You must see the results. And, you know, if, if you, in, in this thing for about 10 years and it's only two people, then something wrong. You understand? Something wrong there. So it have to be, you have to see results when you're dealing with the most high. Right? So the scripture says, let's read Isaiah chapter 49 verse 4. 49 verse 4. This is the book of Isaiah chapter 49 verse 4. Then I said, I have labored in vain. I have spent my strength for naught and in vain. Yet surely my judgment is with the Most High and my work with my power. You see that? So brothers and sisters, the work that we're doing is not in vain. Some people, it might appear to be in vain for some people ever. Some people might, you know, might not see the, the, the results or the benefits. But the results and the benefits is also spiritual, brothers and sisters. So you may not see it physical too, you know. And this thing is not about numbers. We're not focusing about how much people we have. It's not about that. It's about spiritual growth. So we want to see everybody grow spiritually. We want to see each island grow spiritually. We want to see people denounce sin. You understand? It can have four or five people and the ones they live in righteousness, that's all that matters. Right? It can have a hundred people and it, it's pure fornication, pure adultery, all type of madness going on. So it's, it's, it's not really about the numbers. It's about people doing the right thing. As, as Christ says, broad is the way that leads to destruction. Right, so it's just a, a, a small group is actually going to get to the kingdom at the end of the day. Right? So our labor, brothers and sisters, is not in vain. So we had to make sure that, you know, whatever you put out there, put it out from, you know, from, from the depths of your heart. Make sure that you're doing this because, you know, you, you, you love the most high. You ain't doing it because of vain glory or you ain't doing it because... You know, you want to please man. This is about pleasing the most high. All right. Continue reading. Continuing in Isaiah chapter 49 and verse 5. Mm -hmm. And now say of the most high that founded me from the womb to be his servant, to bring Jacob again unto him. Though Israel be not gathered, yet shall I be glorious in the eyes of the most high, and my power shall be my strength. You see that? So, the most I chose us from the womb, brothers and sisters. Listen, each one of us, from the time we were born, we were chosen to receive this truth. And it's not a coincidence, brothers and sisters, that you, that, that you come into this understanding. From the womb, the most I selected you to, 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 to wake up in this time. So you had to count yourself special. You had to count yourself worthy to this truth. Because not everybody will receive this. So read that verse again from verse 5. Continuing at verse 5 in the book of Isaiah, chapter 49. And now see of the Most High that formed me from the womb to be his servant. You see that? So he formed us from the womb to be his servant. Just like, you know, just like Christ. Just like, you know, Abraham, just like Moses, just like David, they were all formed from the womb. So each one of us, brothers and sisters, have a purpose. And listen, if you don't know what your purpose is right now, that's okay. That's okay. But one day it's going to manifest. Once you stay consistent and once you stay committed to the most high, it's going to manifest. Okay, continue reading. Continuing at verse 6. And he said, It is a light thing that thou shouldest be my servant to raise up the tribes of Jacob and to restore the, uh, the preserve of Israel. You see that? So, brothers and sisters, 
you have to go and wake up the tribes throughout the islands. Because there's other tribes here besides Benjamin. And Benjamin is not the only tribe here in the Caribbean. You understand? So our responsibility is, 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 is more than just Benjamin. It's about Israel. It's about the children of Israel. That is our responsibility. So we understand after we wake up the children of Israel, we also have to teach the Gentiles. You understand? Because this is what the scripture says. We have to be a light to the Gentiles. So, yes, we're teaching our people, but yes, we're teaching anybody that wants to receive Christ. Anybody that wants to follow the Most High, we're going to teach them. Because this is what Christ said. Christ said to go to all nations, all nations teaching them and baptizing them. All right? Let's drop that. Let's go to um, the book of Titus. Actually, you know what? Let's go to 1 Corinthians. 1 Corinthians chapter... First Corinthians chapter three, verse thirteen. This is the book of First Corinthians chapter three, beginning at verse thirteen. Every man's work shall be made manifest, for the day shall declare it, because it shall be revealed by fire. And the fire shall try every man's work of what sort it is. You see that? So, I want to ask a question. Those that are listening online, those that are present, are you ready to face the fire? Are we ready to face the fire? Because if you want to do the work, you have to go through the fire. And this is what does this is what does chase people away from this truth in it, is the fire. You see, when they get too hot, people don't like that. People don't like the heat. They don't want to get burned. But brothers and sisters, this is how we get rid of certain things in our life. It it must be burnt off, it must be cut off. So People don't want to go through adversities. People don't want to go through tribulation. People don't want to go through affliction. But the scripture says, through much um, affliction, we, we will enter the, into the kingdom. Christ went through 10 times worse things than any one of us will go through. But yet, he still endured. So, we who want to do this work, you will be tried. You will be tried. And trust me, everybody have different um, fires they will have to go through. Excuse <laughs> me. My fire might be small. His fire might be big. But at the end of the day, we still had to go through something. You understand? So what are we going to do when we start going through these fires? What are we going to do? Are we going to run away? Are we going to say, well, you know, uh, uh, this is not for me? And yes, some people will say that. Some people will run away from the fire. But those that stay and endure, you will see their work manifest. You will see the results of them staying the course. Listen, this brother beside me, if he did give up, I wouldn't be sitting here today. And because he stayed the course, you all are here today. You understand? So it's like we, we have to look at these type of situations and see, okay, listen, am I willing to go through the same things like this brother? Because a lot of times people want to be in this position but not willing to go through these things that puts you in these positions. You understand? The sacrifices you have to make. 
brother and sister, to, to be in this truth, you have to make sacrifices. The scripture says that we must present ourselves as a living sacrifice. So you have to present your body as a living sacrifice if you want to do this work. And the bottom line is a lot of people don't want to do that. People still want to kind of, you know, they want to do the work, but they don't want to make the sacrifices. Right? But you have to make sacrifices. Are you willing to go sleep for a whole day? <laughs> yeah, like, you know what that is? You know, like you get getting headaches, all kind of thing. You, you, you're wondering if you're, you know, you're going to collapse. And I'm, I'm not saying to do this, you know. But these are the, the things that you have to go through. If you want to, you know, do the will of the most high, you, you have to deny the flesh. Sometimes the flesh telling you, listen, I can't go no more. But you have to do it. You don't have a choice. I mean, yes, you do have a choice. They can say no. But again, if you want your work to be manifested, you have to stay the course. Right? Continue reading. Yeah. Continuing from the book of 1 Corinthians, chapter 3 and verse 14. Mm -hmm. If any man's work, a bid with which he have built thereupon, he shall receive a reward. You see that? So you will be rewarded, brothers and sisters, if you stay the course. Just like this child. He's, he, was re he stayed the course, and look where he is now. He's sitting yeah. beside the Mosa. You understand? And listen, that, that is, that, this is why he's sitting beside the Mosa, because the, the, the things he did. So if we want to inherit everlasting life, if we want to inherit the kingdom, we also have to make those same sacrifices. And it may not be as much as Christ, but at the end of the day, you have to make sacrifices. Right? Read on. Continuing at verse 15. If any man work shall be burnt, he shall suffer loss. But he himself shall be saved, yet so as by fire. Verse 16. Know ye not that you are of the temple of the Most High, and that the Spirit of the Most High dwelleth in you? Verse 17. If any man defiles the temple of the Most High, him shall the Most High destroy, for the temple of the Most High is holy, which temples ye are. You see that? So that's a question for all of us listening online, all of us that's present. Which temple are we? So yes, we are celebrating the Feast of dedication all right the feast of dedication as we all know with the history you know we regained the temple we went and cleaned the temple you know we, we was able to re-establish the temple right now we were able to re-establish our temple we took back our temple from sin from the adversary because the adversary once had our temple you understand we, we was defiling it left, right, and center. But now, we was able to regain the temple. So we had to make sure and keep that temple. Just like all the Maccabeans fought, we had to fight for our temple. We had to make sure that, listen, we're not going to allow anything to come into the pilot. All right? So, brothers and sisters, if you want to do the work of the Mosai, you have to keep a clean temple. For one, like for example, if you want to do the work of the Most High, you have to be healthy. You have to be healthy. Your, your temple must be clean. You understand? You can't be obese. I want to say you want to go do the work. That doesn't make any sense. You understand? It's like by the time you start talking, you're losing your breath. So it's like, you know, you have to get yourself in order before you go do the work. It's just like baptism. You have to get yourself in order before you go into the water. So doing the work, brothers and sisters, is a preparation. So let's get that. Let's go to Second Chronicles. Second Chronicles chapter 15. And let's begin at verse 7. 
This is why, brothers and sisters, the Most High gave us the dietary laws to keep our temple clean, to keep our temple strong. And and listen, you know, and this is not to discredit anybody who may not be physically strong to go out there and do the work. There's other ways of doing the work too. You understand? There's many different ways of doing the work. Right? But you cannot limit yourself. Just because you might have a certain, um, like, whatever challenge, doesn't mean you shouldn't do the work. You understand? Some people, matter of fact, some people may not be able to read as strong as, you know, another person. But does that mean you shouldn't do the work? Some people may not be able to break down precepts like, you know, like the elders. Does that mean you shouldn't do the work? Right? You know, the scripture says you must, you know, prove your own your own self. You you must know your strengths and your weaknesses. Right? Let's get that. First Corinthians chapter 15, verse second so, I'm sorry. You see Daddy Tightness kicking in, right? Yeah. Second Chronicles <laughs> 15, second verse 7. <laughs> well, this is the book of Second Chronicles, chapter 15 and verse 7. Be you strong, therefore, and let not your hand be weak. Read that verse again. Be you strong, therefore, and let, let not your hands be weak. You see that? Be ye strong, therefore, and let not your hands be weak. So you, you have to be spiritually strong, but you, brothers and sisters, your mind, nothing could, you know, no negativity, no, you know, no, um, your mind cannot be clouded. You, you have to be strong, right? You cannot allow anything to distract you when you're doing the work, brothers and sisters. Your hands cannot be weak, right? Read. Just being on the top. Yeah, where it says, continue reading from verse 7. For your work shall be rewarded. For your work shall be rewarded. Read on. And when Asa heard these words and the prophecies of Oded, the prophet, he took courage and put away the abominable idols out of all the land of Judah and Benjamin and out of the cities which he had taken from Mount Ephraim and renewed the altar of the Most High that was before the porch of the Most High. You see that? So let's look at this scripture very carefully. So read that verse again, brother. Verse eight. verse eight. And when and when Asa heard these words and the prophecies of Oded, the prophet, he took courage and put away the abominable idols of all the land of Judah and Benjamin. Right. So he put away all the abominable idols. So this is what we have to do, brothers and sisters. Anything that's keeping us back from doing the work, we had to put it aside. And yes, there's going to be a lot of things to prevent us, to keep us back from doing the work. Number one thing is friends and families. Listen, I am I, I'm married, brothers and sisters. I have children. Trust me, my wife and my children is not keeping me back from doing this work. I, I can't I can't I cannot have anybody stop me from doing this work because this work is bigger than them. You understand? So you know, and I'm not saying you know to neglect your family, brothers and sisters, because trust me, I don't neglect my wife or my children. But guess what? We have to put the most high always first. That's 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 what being committed means. You have to put everything, when it comes to the Most High, first and foremost. Right? But a lot of people are not willing to make those sacrifices. A lot of people won't, won't do that because they feel that they, they, you know, it, it's not something honorable. Or Listen, the Most High gave you your family. The Most High gave you your friends. The Most High gave you your job. You know, listen, you know I call out sick, right? Uh, yeah, I, I call out sick. Listen, I, I don't care if 
I get fired, which I know I won't get fired. But when it's come to when it's come time to do the most work, most high work, everything is up. I call in sick. Let's say what, what, what you want me to do is like I call in sick. You know, this is more important. This is more important than building seats and kingdom. You understand? But a lot of people are not going to do that. A lot of people are not going to do that. People are going to be like, well, I'm going to lose my job. Who gave you my job? The most side. So you think he's going to get me fired for doing his work? Of course not. So we, listen, when, when you do any work at the most side, brothers and sisters, you're going to be faced with tough decisions. And you have to be ready to make those tough decisions. You understand? First, one of, these, one of these decisions you have to make, you have to be willing to die. You have to make up your mind. Listen, this is a, this is a possibility. I am going to die. So a lot of people don't want to do that. People want to save their life. People don't want to give up their life in them. People are still holding on to this life, which is like, listen, the best thing to do is to die doing the work of the most high. That's, that's the ultimate. That's what Christ did. Christ died doing the Father's work. All the prophets, all the disciples, they died doing the Father's work. So if we want to be just like them, we have to do the same thing. You understand? Let's get back to the scripture. Let's go to the book of Hebrews. And brothers and sisters, this is not to exalt me or anybody else. This is just an example to show you you have to make tough decisions when you have to when you come to serve the most high. All right. Hebrews chapter 6, verse 10. This is the book of Hebrews, chapter 6, reading from verse 10. For the most high is not unrighteous to forget your work and labor of love. You see that? The most high is not going to forget that. And brothers and sisters, this is showing that you love the most high. You have to prove. You have to show the most high and prove to the most high that you love him. It's more than just saying it. You understand? People say, yeah, I do any work. Okay, you do any work, but you're still in the same spot for the past 10 to 15 years. Listen, you cannot have this truth and stay in one area. That, that, that doesn't make any sense. Jonah wanted to stay in one area. The most I said, no, you have to move on. You understand? Paul was moving on from one place to the next. But then sister says, you know what islands did have in the Caribbean? You know how much islands? Yo, I'm amazed to see how much islands can have in the Caribbean. And each one of these islands, you don't think they should hear this truth too? Not everybody have YouTube. Not everybody have Facebook. Not everybody have Messenger. So some people have to be on the ground. Yes, there's different methods. There's different ways to, 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 to spread the word. But you also have to be on the ground. We also need people on the ground. And the Mosai is going to help to set those things up. But we also have to do our part. Read that verse again. Hebrews chapter 6 and verse 10. For the Mosai is not unrighteous to forget your work and labor of love, mm -hmm. which you have shewed towards his name, in that you have ministered to the saints and do minister. You see that? Minister, brothers and sisters, means to serve. So you have to be a servant. Right? Some people come into this truth to be served. You know? When you come into this truth, you come into this truth as a servant. Listen, I'm here to serve all of you. This is what i basically here to do. I came to serve all of you. Anything what they want me to do? Hey, where you at I'm a back stretcher, man. <laughs> you understand? Hey, but exactly, you know, going through some situations. Hey, how can I help? 
this is this is what you know we have to do as you know followers of the most high we have to serve each other and again brother and sister people don't people not willing to do those things right we don't continue reading at verse 11 and we desire that every one of you do show the same diligence to the full assurance of hope unto the end. You see that? So my hope is that everybody put the same effort. Everybody put the same effort. If everybody put the same effort, you know much, you know much things we can get done. You understand? If everybody say, well, listen, you know what? I'm gonna take one island, right? You know much work we can get done. And I think I think that's moving forward. We had to start thinking like that. Listen, Anguilla right there, Guadalupe right there, St. Kitts right there. It's like we have to find a way, brothers and sisters, to go to these areas. We have to find a way. It's more than just having it on our island. We have to spread the word. And the most I will make a way for that. But we have to be willing. Right? We don't. Continue with verse 12. That ye be not slothful, but followers of them, who through faith and patience inherit the promises. You see that? So we can't be slothful when it comes to the Father's business. Imagine this. Some people that be slothful when it comes to the most I would, but when it's time to do master job, they're on time. This is our people, isn't it? They, they need to work on time, but when it's time to have Sabbath meeting, they're coming in two hours late. When it's time to do the work, they, 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 they can't come up. They can't make it. It's not supposed to be like that. that that's, that's being slothful. So we cannot be slothful to do the work of the most high brothers and sisters. We have to be diligent. And don't listen. And don't get me wrong. Sometimes... You need to take a rest. You don't want the body to collapse on you. Sometimes you need to take a rest. But guess what? After your rest, you got to go again. You understand? Some people have been resting for five, ten years. Waiting to, I don't know what they're waiting on. You understand? I mean, listen, when you get this truth, that fire is being here. It's like you want to go on and, and talk to everybody. That's how that zeal should be every single day. Now, not every day you might get the opportunity to talk to somebody, in, but every day you might have the opportunity to show your light, to prove to the Most High that you love Him, whether it is in prayer, whether it is in songs, whether it is in whatever it is. You have to show the Most High every single day that you love Him. Every single day. You have to prove to the most high that you love him. Right? Let's go to the book of Matthew. Matthew chapter 16, verse 27. Matthew chapter 16, verse 27. This is the book of Matthew, chapter 16, and verse 27. For the Son of Man shall come in the glory of his Father with his angels, and then he shall reward every man according to his work. You see that? So, I mean, everybody wants to be rewarded for their job, for their work. And who is, you know, who is not, not, who's not the, who's the best person to reward you? Not Christ himself? Sorry. You understand? So, I mean, brothers and sisters, if you, if you stay faithful to this work, one day your shire will reward you. You understand? This, this, is, this is like the fulfillment of doing the work, knowing that one day you will be rewarded. Because right now, Doing this work, brothers and sisters, you don't get rewarded. <laughs> Doing this work, man don't reward you. Man don't reward you. Listen, 
We don't get paid for this. <laughs> we don't get paid for this. Doing this, you know, you don't get paid for, you know, financially. This is not Christianity. You understand? We had to scrape up, scrape up money to get plane tickets to travel. We don't have no private jet. We are no, you know, we, we, we don't have no luxurious transportation. Listen, we, we had to travel, what, coach? <laughs> you understand? Them big boys and them traveling first class. And what work them doing? Them going amongst the people? No. You understand? So, the, the, the true laborers, they're not getting rewarded by man. Is the most high going to reward them? And, and this is the reward that you want. You want to be given that crown of life. You understand? You want to be given the, the, you know, the stars that Christ was offering in the book of Revelations. Right? So the scripture says, For the Son of Man shall come in the glory of his Father. Right? Read on. Read that verse again. Verse 27. For the Son of Man shall come in the glory of his Father with his angels, and then he shall reward every man according to his work. According to his work. So, that means, brothers and sisters, you must have some work to show. Again, everybody have a different responsibility. Everybody have a different job to do. My job is not the same as your job. Your job is not the same as my job. But the bottom line is, we all have a job to do, and we must do it. Right? We must do it. We can't say, well, you know, you know, I have work. All right. You have work? Let me see it. Because this is what the Most High, when he sent Christ, Yeshua, he wants to see the work that you're doing. Let's go to the book of Psalms real quick. Psalms chapter 28. Psalms chapter 28, verse 4. This is the book of Psalms chapter 28 and verse 4. Give them according to their deeds. Read that again. Give them according to their deeds. Give them according to their deeds. Read on. And according to the wickedness of their endeavors. You see that? Read. Give them after the work of their hands. Render to them their desert. You see that? So, what work do we have to show, brothers and sisters? Listen, we have to have so much work. We, yo, listen, the kind of work that we must have, brothers and sisters, to enter into the kingdom is a lot. It's a lot of work. It's not just about, you know, going on Facebook and throwing a few scriptures here and there. You know. that, that, that is, you know, it's more than that. You understand? It's more than that. It is, you know, it's like, Sometimes we feel like we're doing plenty. Listen, you should never feel, um, you know, comfortable in the work you're doing. You should always try to exceed or excel or try to do better. You understand? You should always try to say, you know what? What else can I do? That's what a servant does do. You know, what else can I do to assist or, or to help the Most High and His work? That's how we had to look at this, right? Read that verse again. This is the book of Psalms. Psalms chapter 28. Verse 4. And verse 4. Give them according to their deeds and according to the wickedness of their endeavors. Mm -hmm. Give them after the work of their hands. Render to them their desert. Read on. Verse 5. Because they regard not the works of the Most High, nor the operation of his hands, he shall destroy them and not build them up. We verse six. Bless the Most High. Bless be the Most High, Salah. 
because he have rendered the voice of my supplication. The Most High is my strength and my shield. My heart trusted in him and I am helped. You see that, brother and sister? So when you're feeling weak, when you're feeling weary, when you're feeling like you, you can't, you know, you can't go on or you don't know what to do or you're not sure what you have to do, go to the Most High. Ask him, Father, what do you want me to do? Show me the way. Direct my footsteps. You know, co correct me wherever I'm going wrong. You know, grant me your knowledge, your wisdom, and your understanding to make the right decisions. This is how this is how we had to talk to the most high, you know, because at the end of the day, we can't really you know figure out this thing. You know. This thing is not, you know, not easy to figure out. So we need some divine intervention. The most I have to show us the way. But well, it's really untrue. We can lean on to our own understanding. If we were to lean on our own understanding, we all will be lost. So we had to ask the most high for help. Father, please show me the way. Tell me what you want me to do. Teach me what you want me to do. Help me. You understand? And and listen, we just quicker ask for help from man than from the most high. You understand? We just ask for help from man when man can't really help you. <laughs> man need help himself. So we need to turn to the Most High as often as we can for help. Father, I need help. I cannot go through this by myself. I need yourself. I need your, your, your sustenance right now. And the scripture says, ask and you shall receive. But you know, we just feel all high and mighty, I could do this by myself, I could work through this on my own. This is why we keep getting myself in the same situation, same problems keep reoccurring because we want to do it on our own. And listen, this work here, you cannot do it by yourself. The most I have to direct your path for this work. Because sometimes you think you had to go so, when you really had to go so. You understand? Listen, like I was giving, giving the brother the testimony earlier today. I never see myself going back in, in, in Babylon. That was the last thing I wanted to do. You understand? But now, going back there now, I see exactly what the most I was trying to do. And I, try, I was trying to fight it. I say, you know what, Father? I'm not going to fight you. You understand? So if I was not in Babylon, I wouldn't be here today. Because being there, I was able to travel to and fro. It was a lot easier. It was more economical. You understand? And I knew, I realized when I was there, outside of Babylon, I was just in one area, one spot. But now coming out now, I'm able to move around. So sometimes we don't really see the big picture. Sometimes we just try to fight the inevitable. But sometimes, brothers and sisters, you had to just let go and let the Most High do what he's supposed to do. Stop fighting the Most High. Right? Let's go to John chapter 17, verse 4. Listen, if you if you if anybody wants to fight the Most High, good luck for you. Because you're going to lose. You understand? Look what happened to Jonah again. He wanted to fight the most high. Look where he ended up. The same place he didn't want to go is the same place the most high sent him. All right, let's go. John, John chapter 17, verse 4. This is the book of John chapter 17 and verse 4. I have glorified thee on the earth. I have finished the work which thou givest me to do. You see that? So is the Most High who gave Christ the job to do in us. Christ didn't come to do his own job in us. So we just, you know, this is why, you know, people are worshiping Christ. Do worship Christ. Christ came to do the work of somebody else that sent him. So we should worship the one who sent Christ. Yes, we have to honor and reverence Christ. Of course, absolutely. But who did Christ pray to? Christ prayed to the Father. So it's like the same person Christ praying to 
is the same person we have to pray to. So Christ said, I have finished the work which thou gavest me to do. So the most is the most I who gave Christ a job to do. So is the most I who gave us a job to do. Right? So at the end of the day, when our numbers call, the most I gonna say, Did you do my job? And listen, brother and sister, if you say yes. He's going to want to see it. So, you know, we can't lie to the Most High. We all know that. We cannot lie to the Most High. So the Most High want to see work, brothers and sisters. He want to see your work. He want to see your work. So, the, again, the name of the lesson is called, It's High Time to Do the Work. Right now, brothers and sisters, the time counting down. Look, 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 at, look how... Time going by so fast, right? So that means the time to do the job coming down to an end. So you have limited time to do your job. So that means you have to kind of rush and, and, and make sure you get it done. Make sure you fulfill all your duties, all the responsibilities, right? Let's go to Romans chapter 9, verse 28. We just got a few more brothers and sisters. Romans chapter 9, verse 28. This is the book of Romans chapter 9, beginning at verse 28. For he will finish the work and cut it short in righteousness. You see that? Read on. Because a short work will the Mosai make upon the earth. You see that? So it's just a short time, and it's just a short time we have again, my brother and sister. Now that short time could be a twenty years, a thirty years. It could be a five years. It could be a two years, <laughs> right? And look at we must all look at each day as the last day, because no day is promised to anybody. Tomorrow is not promised to nobody. So think about it today. What work did I do today? What did I do today? What did I do to show the most high that I love him today? You understand? This is how we had to count every day. What did I do today? Again, we just put put blood, sweat, and tears for this kingdom. For this kingdom, blood, sweat, and tears. We just want to, you know, fight and make sure everything get done. What about the Mosai kingdom? What about his kingdom? What are we doing to build his kingdom? So what work have we had? What work can we show that we contributed towards the Mosai kingdom? Listen, we had to really work hard, brother and sister. And listen... What I doing is no listen. I have plenty work to do in all there. I listen. I can't even count this as work. <laughs> you understand? I can't even count this as work. I need a lot more work to do, brothers and sisters. You know, I mean, the most I give each one of us a different spirit to fulfill His work. So what I might be weak in is what you might be strong in. So we all must all come together to fulfill his work. You understand? So again, brothers and sisters, I cannot do this work by myself. This is why we need each other. You understand? So a lot of times people want to go do the work for themselves. You're going to fail by doing that too. Because even Christ himself didn't do the work by himself. He went and get 12 disciples, which ended up becoming 11 disciples to, to help him to do the work. So if Christ went to get help, who is me and you? You understand? So this is why we ask him for help. We need help. We need help. We cannot do this by ourselves. Listen, there's so much other islands out here. Me and Azar and all the officers, all the deacons, all the bishops, all the elders, we need help. 
If nobody asks in for help, I ask in for help. I need help. I don't I don't want no financial help. I don't want no, you know, I want you to go do the work. That is the help that we need. You understand? That is the help that we asking for. For all year to go out and do the work too. Meet us, meet us at distance, meet us halfway. Let's go to the book of Second Timothy. Yeah. Matter of fact, yeah, let's do Second Timothy. Second Timothy chapter 2, verse 21. This is the book of Second Timothy, chapter 2, and verse 21. Yeah. If a man therefore purge himself from these, he shall be a vessel unto, unto honor, sanctified and meet for the master's use, and prepared unto every good work. So, brothers and sisters, it's feast of dedication. Feast of dedication is upon us. It's coming to our close. Clean out the temple. Get yourself ready to be used by the Mosa. You understand? Get yourself prepared to be used by, by the Father. So this is what the scriptures say. Read that again for us. 2 Timothy chapter 2 and verse 21. If a man therefore purge himself from these, he shall be a vessel unto honor, sanctified and meet for the master's use and prepared unto every good work. So believe it or not, brothers and sisters, we are all sanctified we were all sanctified the most high sanctified listen we wouldn't be here if he wasn't sanctified we would not be sitting down here on this sabbath night if we weren't sanctified if we weren't summoned to do a, to do a job that's how others look at life nothing has happened by chance everything is designed so is whether we fight it or you know because some people will fight and not do the work they will fight and say you know what I don't have time I don't have you know energy I don't have you know I don't you know I don't have the capabilities you know listen this is what Moses was saying Moses was telling the most I can't you know I can't talk you know what, what the most I say, no, listen, look, look Aaron there. So, however you want to come out of this, the most I will find a way for you to do it. So, just make up your mind to do it. That's how we had to look at it. Just make up your mind to do it. Right? Let's get the last scripture for you now. Let's go to Matthew chapter 5, verse 16. That's right now. I don't want to stop there. I got I got a few more, but let's read that one. This is the book of Matthew, chapter 5, and verse 16. Let your light so shine before men that they may see your good work and glorify your father, which is in heaven. You see that? So again, brothers and sisters, this is not to, to be glorified by men. Enough. But when you're doing good things, people will respect you. People will honor you. Right? But again, you're not doing it for any vain glory. So the scripture says, let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works and glorify your Father which is in heaven. So men is not supposed to glorify you. When they see the good works, it's not about you. You just a vessel. You just an instrument. It's to glorify the Father. This is what Christ was teaching us. It's not about Him. It's about the Father. Right? Let's get. Let's get one more. Let's go to Nehemiah. Nehemiah chapter four. Verse 11. This is the book of Nehemiah, chapter 4, and verse 11. And our adversary said, They shall not know 
made a sea till we come in the midst among them and slay them and cause the work to cease. You see that, brothers and sisters? There it goes right there. The adversary do not want you to do the work. So the adversary is going to find all type of reasons for you to think that you can do the work. So the adversary want this work to stop. But remember what I said in the beginning. They cannot stop this. Listen, if I not here, Brother Azar here. If Brother Azar not there, somebody else will be there. So you, you cannot stop prophecy, brothers and sisters. They cannot stop it. They're trying to, but they can't. So they will put a lot of stumbling blocks in front of our people to distract us, to keep us blinded, to keep us, you know, to, to make us lose motivation. Because trust me, I've seen a lot of people lose motivation from doing it. People get weary. People get, you know, people lose, they get discouraged. But you cannot lose patience in doing this with brothers and sisters. It's going to take a lot to, to endure. At the end of the day, it's going to take a lot to endure. But we have it in us. And I always highlight this. If our four parents went through type of slavery, right? They went through all that um, adversity, all that affliction, all the things that they went through. We have it in us to go through anything on this earth. Anything that they throw at us, we have it in us to do, to overcome it. So this is why we must have that, that determined spirit within us that nothing could stop us from doing the will of the most high. So, brothers and sisters, the name of this lesson is, in, is entitled, It's High Time to Do the Will. All right? So I pray that, that this, this, this lesson was helpful. I pray that it was edifying. I pray that it was encouraging for those that listen to go out there and to do the will of the Most High. Help the Most High. Help Christ. Help the brethren. Help the sisters. Help those that are laboring out there because there's a lot of, there's a lot of work to do. Christ said, pray, pray for laborers. So, you know, if, if, if that is part of your responsibility to pray for laborers, hey, we need that help too. You understand? We need that support. All right. So um, it's now 9.50 on our end. So we're going to end it there, brothers and sisters. And I know, you know, we usually um, locked in a little later on the Shabbat. But tonight, you know, we are here in... St. Martin. So we want to, you know, fellowship with the brothers and sisters, get to know them and, you know, build and grow with them here. All right. So we're going to end there. All praises to the Mosai. Higher, higher for.